Lisa's eyes sparkled with a sense of adventure as she gazed upon the magnificent waters of the Great Barrier Reef. Her heart raced with excitement and a hint of fear, but the burning desire to tick off scuba diving in the world-famous reef from her bucket list was stronger than her nerves. She couldn't wait to take the plunge into the unknown depths below. She eagerly donned her black wetsuit, feeling the soft fabric hug her body like a second skin, ready to take on the waters. The oxygen tank felt heavy on her back, but it was a welcome weight, a symbol of the adventure she was about to embark on. As she adjusted her mask and regulator, her senses were heightened with anticipation. She felt as if she was about to enter a whole new world, a world filled with unknown creatures and unimaginable beauty. Lisa felt as though she was venturing into an uncharted universe as she sank into the depths of the ocean. Alien-like creatures surrounded her, flaunting their striking colors and unusual forms, as if they were plucked from the pages of a science fiction novel. Bright and vivid fish raced past her in flashes of neon, their scales gleaming in the sun's warm rays. In mesmerizing patterns, schools of silver fish swirled around her, as if in a trance, like a rhythmic and hypnotic dance. The beauty of the underwater world faded as Lisa's eyes fixated on a looming figure in the distance. It seemed to be emerging from the shadows of the murky depths, revealing its massive size. Her heart pounded in her chest as her breaths came in short, panicked gasps as she recognized the predator in front of her. A sense of dread washed over her as she could feel the hairs on the back of her neck stand on end. It was a tiger shark, easily measuring over 20 feet long, and its sleek body moved through the water with a graceful yet intimidating power. Lisa's mind raced as she tried to remember the guide's instructions on how to avoid attracting sharks, but her mind went on panic. Terror gripped Lisa as she frantically kicked her legs, feeling the weight of the ocean pressing down on her. She could feel her heart pounding in her chest, threatening to burst out of her ribcage as she struggled to gain some distance from the approaching creature. But her movements only seemed to incite the beast, causing it to move faster and closer towards her. Its powerful body sliced through the water, sending ripples across the surface as it moved with deadly intent. Lisa could feel the hairs on the back of her neck stand up as she realized that she was face to face with one of the ocean's most fearsome predators. Despite the guide's reassurances, Lisa could feel the weight of her fear pressing down on her chest like an anchor, dragging her deeper into the abyss of terror. Her heart pounded in her ears as she made her way towards the boat, her movements frantic and uncoordinated, like a panicked prey desperately trying to escape the predator's grasp. But her attempts to flee only seemed to draw the massive shark closer, its fins slicing through the surface of the water as it circled around her like a vulture circling its prey. The other divers froze in terror, their faces etched with horror as they watched the deadly dance between Lisa and the shark. Despite the guide's warning, Lisa's panic had already taken over. Her splashing movements had attracted the lurking predator towards her, and the shark was closing in. Its sleek gray body glided through the water with ease, its dark, lifeless eyes fixed on Lisa. Suddenly, the shark lunged at Lisa. The sound of teeth crunching through bone echoed in her ears as the massive tiger shark clamped down on her left leg. She felt the searing pain shoot through her body, and she let out a blood-curdling scream. The shark's teeth sliced through her flesh like a hot knife through butter, leaving a gaping wound that gushed blood into the ocean. Lisa felt her consciousness slipping away as the pain became too much to bear. Her vision blurred, and she struggled to stay awake, but eventually succumbed to the darkness. The guide's heart raced with adrenaline as he saw Lisa's body sinking rapidly into the abyss. With a burst of energy, he kicked his way towards her, determined to save her. But as he reached her, a sudden chill ran down his spine. From the murky depths emerged the same tiger shark, its massive jaws wide open, ready to strike again. 
The guide's heart pounded in his chest as he watched in horror as the shark bit off Lisa's other leg in a single swift motion. The guide's blood ran cold as he watched in horror as the massive tiger shark ripped off Lisa's limbs one after another, leaving her helpless and mutilated in its wake. He was frozen in fear, unable to process what was happening before his very eyes. The shark's powerful jaws snapped and tore at her flesh, its razor-sharp teeth sinking deep into her body, causing blood to cloud the water. As Lisa's body was being torn apart, the guide felt a sickening feeling in the pit of his stomach, knowing that he had failed to protect her. His mind raced with thoughts of what he could have done differently, but it was too late. The shark, having taken its fill, grabbed Lisa's lifeless carcass and dragged it down to the murky depths of the ocean, leaving the guide in a state of shock and disbelief. He felt helpless, his mind numb as he tried to process the tragedy that had just unfolded before him. The other tourists and members of the diving crew frantically reached out to the authorities, their voices trembling as they recounted the gruesome attack. The authorities quickly dispatched a team of search and rescue divers to scour the surrounding waters, their powerful flashlights cutting through the murky depths like blades. But as they searched and searched, the bleak reality began to set in. There was no hope in finding Lisa alive. After two days of searching, all that was found was Lisa's oxygen tank with scratch and bite marks on its sides. The incident served as a haunting reminder of the unpredictable nature of apex predators and the dangers that lay hidden beneath the tranquil waters of the Great Barrier Reef. Although the great white shark is often considered the most dangerous species of shark in the world, this is a misconception. While they are the most powerful species of shark, Bull sharks are actually more dangerous as they are far more aggressive and more likely to attack humans when interacting with them. They have the tendency to stick to shallow coastal waters and can sometimes migrate up rivers when looking for new places to feed in. Bull sharks can be found all around the world, but the case that we're bringing to you today was noted in Sierra Leone, where Michelle Jones, a tourist, would learn the full potency of nature. Michelle was from North Carolina and had a job as a teacher. She lived in the same town all of her life and always wanted to travel the world. But the tight budget of a school teacher in the United States prevented that. Her husband, Roger, was a blue collar worker and rarely had enough time for leisure. The pair lived their lives for many years before Michelle's husband announced that they were taking a trip. She was surprised and Roger explained that he had won a bonus at his job, and they could use some of their savings to essentially go wherever they wanted to. Michelle was overjoyed by the news, and it took them a few days to agree on where they wanted to go. After some back and forth, they compromised on Sierra Leone, as they had heard amazing things about it. Sierra Leone had fantastic sights, and its beaches were ideal for tourists to lounge and relax from the stress of life. Their trip was booked in no time, and they had two weeks of relaxation ahead of them. They arrived in Sierra Leone on July 17, 1998, after a long flight with a few layovers. So they were quite exhausted and decided just to head to their accommodation and call it a day. The next few days were spent seeing the sights of the city, visiting museums, having drinks, and just enjoying everything the city had to offer. Near the end of the first week, the pair decided they would enjoy some time at the beach. After a day spent lounging around, they went back to their hotel and spotted a sign advertising a cruise from Freetown to Tenafor, which would last for the entire day. Since they were the type to jump at the chance for new experiences, they decided to go on the cruise. Two days later, the cruise was set to start at 9 a.m., so Michelle and Roger got there 30 minutes early. There were 10 more people aside from them, and the tour guide was in high spirits and quite friendly. So the mood was good. They had never been on a cruise before, so they were excited for the day to come. The cruise took two hours to reach its initial destination, 
after which they would have some time to enjoy the sights and whatever they wanted to do. Then they had the trip back. The trip to Tenafor was relaxing and enjoyable as the weather was on their side and the guide's stories about Sierra Leone was quite enjoyable. Michelle and Roger spent their free time in Tenafor, very similarly to their first few days in Freetown, so it was quite enjoyable. The trip back to Freetown was much the same, but something that made the boat slow down was a small shiver of sharks accumulating around a single point in the water, something you wouldn't see too often. The guide asked the pilot of the boat to slow down so everyone could get a better look. Upon closer inspection, they saw that there were three sharks feeding on something in the water, and they couldn't identify it on account of all the blood in the water. The tourists gathered on the boat's railing to see the shark, as the guide described it as a must-see event. They pressed on the railing, struggling to see over each other to take in as much of the scene as possible. Michelle and Roger were side by side and talking about how interesting the scene was. The sharks were ravenous and zipping through the water, absolutely tearing at whatever was in the water. At the peak of the feeding frenzy, the guide said that the boat would start up at that point to stay on schedule. The boat was turned on and started slowly moving forward, and the guide continued to explain what they would do upon returning to Freetown. However, the guide's words were drowned out of Michelle's ears as she hyper-focused on the squeaky railing getting progressively louder. It gave way. Within a moment, Michelle found herself splashing in the water in the middle of the shiver of sharks. The rest of the people on the boat barely managed to hold on to each other to not follow Michelle. Roger screamed after his wife and made an attempt to jump in after her, but the guide prevented him from doing that since so the shark would attack him as well and they would have to save both of them. The moment she fell into the water, Michelle immediately felt the harsh, coarse skin of one of the sharks shred the skin on her back, making her yelp in pain. She flailed her arms in panic as she tried to get to the surface more securely. Normally, Michelle might have had a chance to swim to safety if it was a different shark species in the water with her. But these were bull sharks, and they were hungry. Just as Michelle made eye contact with Roger, she felt a searing pain in her lower thigh, which made her shriek and fall below the surface again. The shark took the move to take the first bite and was quickly out of the way to make way for the next mouth. The guide and the boat's pilot were trying to get the boat closer to Michelle, but it had already moved at least a dozen yards away. Roger was screaming at them to get the boat closer so he could pull his wife to safety but it wasn't working out at all. Michelle felt another set of teeth clamp down on her ankle, pulling her under the water as a strong force knocked into her ribs, disorienting her. All at once, she felt a tremendous amount of pain as the third shark took hold of her right arm, tearing into it and releasing a red mist in the water around her. The pain was more than too much, so after expressing one final scream with the last of her breath, her consciousness started to fade. The last thing she remembered before waking up in the hospital was her husband's hands clutching her arms and pulling her up from the aquatic hell. According to Roger, Michelle was losing a large amount of blood, so the boat was rushing across the water as fast as it could, while the rest of the people on the boat helped tend to Michelle. The only reason Michelle is alive today is that among the group of tourists, there was a single nurse, and the boat had a first aid kit and its essential equipment. Her wounds were bound and tourniquets were applied, but it wasn't much in the way of helping her survive for sure. Emergency services were called to the port, where the boat was supposed to dock, and two paramedics were ready by the time they got there. She was quickly taken to an ambulance, followed by her husband. After she was admitted to the emergency room, the doctors informed Roger that Michelle had lost nearly 35% of her blood, which was near the lethal point, but she would survive. It took a few days for her to stabilize before she could be seen, so Roger was more than relieved when he saw his wife was okay. Her injuries were debilitating as there were some nerve damage and loss of function, so she needed a good deal of physical therapy to be able to walk and use her arm properly. That took months 
but she did pull through and was back to teaching after a few months of recovery. She said that what happened in Sierra Leone was tragic, but it was the way nature worked. She fell into the shark's plate and they responded instinctively. She mentioned multiple times how much she appreciated her husband and the effort he put in to help her that day. Toshiro was part of a crew of experienced fishermen who had been working together for years. They had all grown up in the coastal town of Yokohama, Japan, and had learned to fish from their fathers and grandfathers before them. They had caught all kinds of fish, from small anchovies to large tuna, and had even managed to snag a few exotic fish that had fetched a high price at the local fish market. But there was one fish that had always eluded them, and that was the shark. Sharks were known to be one of the most elusive and dangerous fish in the sea, and catching one was considered a feat of great skill and bravery. Toshiro had heard that there was a high demand for shark meat in the city, and that it fetched a premium price at the market. He knew that catching a shark would not only be a personal accomplishment, but it would also be a lucrative business opportunity. Despite knowing that it was illegal to catch sharks, Toshiro couldn't resist the temptation. He believed that he could catch one without getting caught by the authorities and was willing to take the risk. He began researching the best bait and techniques for catching sharks and spent hours on his boat scanning the horizon for any signs of a shark. He even invested in special gear, including a stronger fishing line and hooks to ensure that he would be able to catch the shark once he found it. Toshiro was determined to catch the shark, not just for the thrill of the hunt, but also for the potential profits it could bring him. He was willing to break the law to achieve his goal, even though he knew the risk and consequences of getting caught. That is why when Toshiro heard that there had been sightings of sharks in the open waters of the Pacific Ocean, he suggested to the crew that they try to catch one, knowing that it would be a risky but potentially lucrative endeavor. The crew was looking for a big catch to make up for the slow fishing they had experienced earlier in the week, so they agreed to Toshiro's suggestion, albeit reluctantly. They set to work, preparing their gear and bait for the shark hunt. They had a large boat equipped with a powerful motor, and they scanned the horizon for any signs of a shark's fin. They knew that sharks were attracted to schools of fish, so he scanned the water for any signs of movement or activity. They also checked their fishing chart to identify areas where the water was deeper, hoping that this would increase their chances of finding sharks. After a few hours of searching, Toshiro spotted a large fin breaking the surface of the water in the distance. He knew that this was likely the shark he had been looking for, and he quickly steered the boat in its direction. As they approached the shark, Toshiro could feel his heart pounding in his chest. He knew that sharks were dangerous and that any misstep could be fatal, but he was determined to catch the shark, and he believed that he had the skills and experience to do so. Toshiro, being the most experienced fisherman in the crew, took the lead and began taunting the shark with his fishing pole, hoping to provoke it into attacking. But the shark was not easily fooled. It circled their boat, watching him carefully and waiting for an opportunity to strike. Toshiro cast his line, using a large piece of fish as bait. He waited patiently for the shark to bite, hoping that he had chosen the right spot and the right time to catch it. The tension on his fishing line was palpable, and he could feel his adrenaline rising as he waited for the shark to take the bait. Finally, the shark made its move, lunging at the bait with lightning speed. Toshiro pulled his line away, trying to get the shark to come closer to the boat so they could catch it. The crew was excited, and they cheered Toshiro on, watching as he fought with the shark. But the shark was too quick, and it turned on him, attacking his arm and dragging him into the water. The crew quickly sprang into action, pulling Toshiro back onto the boat and attempting to save his life. They saw that Toshiro had suffered serious injuries, with bite marks on his arm and torso, and blood was gushing from the wounds. The crew knew that time was of the essence, and they immediately began to administer first aid to Toshiro. One of the crew members applied pressure to the wounds to stop the bleeding, while another crew member checked Toshiro's pulse and breathing. 
the crew realized that they needed to get Toshiro back to shore as soon as possible so he could receive proper medical attention. They radioed for emergency assistance and were able to get in touch with a Coast Guard who sent a rescue helicopter to their location. In the meantime, the crew worked tirelessly to stabilize Toshiro's condition. They covered him with blankets to keep him warm and hydrated him with fluids. They also monitored his vital signs closely, taking turns to make sure he was comfortable and stable. When the rescue helicopter arrived, the crew helped to transfer Toshiro onto a stretcher and lifted him onto the helicopter. They stayed with him during the flight back to shore, offering words of encouragement and comfort. When they reached the hospital, the crew stayed by Toshiro's side, waiting anxiously for news of his condition. Despite their best efforts, however, Toshiro's injuries were too severe, and he passed away a few hours later. After Toshiro's tragic death, the crew was deeply affected and mourned his loss for several weeks. They had lost not only a colleague, but also a dear friend. The incident had a profound impact on the crew, and they realized that they had taken unnecessary risk in their pursuit of the shark. They vowed never to put themselves in danger again and to prioritize safety above all else. The crew decided to start a safety training program for fishermen in their town in order to prevent similar accidents from happening in the future. They worked with local authorities and fishing associations to develop safety protocols and trainings and they shared their experience with other fishermen. Despite the tragedy, the crew continued to fish and work together, but with a renewed sense of caution and respect for the sea. They had learned a valuable lesson about the dangers of their profession and the importance of safety, and they were determined to never forget it. Randall had always been a daring soul, seeking out the most exhilarating adventures. The thrill of scaling mountains, gliding through the air, and even conquering the world's highest peak had all been accomplished. However, now he yearned for the heart-pounding excitement of undersea exploration. After much research, Randall chose Mossel Bay, a place renowned for its vast population of great white sharks, to try his hand at shark cage diving. The idea of being submerged in a steel cage teetering precariously on the ocean's surface while the colossal predator swam around, both fascinated and terrified him. It was a once-in-a-lifetime experience that could go one of two ways, an unforgettable thrill or a terrifying disaster. The journey to Mossel Bay was long, but when Randall arrived, he was struck by its immense beauty. The cerulean waters of the ocean shimmered under the sun's rays, the coastline was a picturesque panorama of rocky cliffs and sandy beaches. The tranquil town was small, but it was clear that this place held great power, with the possibility of danger lurking just below the water's surface. Randall's excitement grew as he boarded the boat and set out towards the diving location. The cage was ready and waiting for him, and he couldn't wait to be lowered into the water. As the cage sank into the depths of the ocean, Randall's anticipation turned to fear. The water was murky, and he couldn't see far beyond the steel cage. The silence was deafening, and the only sound was the rhythmic breathing of the diving crew. Suddenly, a group of great white sharks began to circle the cage, their teeth glistening in the murky water as they attacked the steel pegs. Randall could feel his heart pounding in his chest as he watched them wondering if the cage could withstand their attack. But as the sharks continued to circle, the cage remained sturdy, and Randall felt confident that nothing bad could happen. As the minutes ticked by, the tension grew palpable as the sharks kept circling the cage, their razor-sharp teeth bared in a menacing display. Randall and the crew felt a sense of relief when the sharks eventually stopped attacking the cage only for their relief to quickly turn to confusion as they suddenly disappeared without a trace. In the murky waters, a thick layer of foam and bubbles made it difficult to see anything. But in the depths, Randall caught a glimpse of something that made his heart race with fear. A massive figure was moving towards the cage with deadly precision. 
It was coming fast, and there was nowhere to hide. As it approached, the figure became clearer, revealing itself to be a colossal great white shark. Its massive body dwarfed all other sharks they had seen before. Its scarred sides bore the evidence of countless battles, and its cold, dead eyes were fixed on the steel cage with an unerring focus. The crew and Randall watched in terror as the shark kept circling the cage, getting closer and closer with each pass. The atmosphere was thick with fear as they waited for what would happen next. The suspenseful silence was shattered when the shark disappeared suddenly into the depths of the ocean, leaving them all gasping for air. With the sudden appearance of the colossal great white shark, the crew of the diving expedition was thrown into a frenzy of fear and panic. They knew that they had to act quickly to save Randall's life. Without hesitation, they pulled on the rope that would lift the steel cage back to the surface. As they hauled it up, Randall could feel his heart pounding in his chest, and his body was shaking with fear. Just as he was about to breathe a sigh of relief, thinking he had made it out alive, the bottom of the cage was struck by a massive force. It felt like a powerful blow from a sledgehammer, and Randall was thrown off balance, his body jerking wildly in the water. He knew that something terrible was happening, and he could feel his fear growing with each passing moment. The sound of the impact was deafening, and Randall could feel his ears ringing. The water around him churned and frothed, and he knew that something was trying to break through the cage. His mind raced as he tried to imagine what kind of monster was capable of such a feat of strength. Randall's mind raced as he frantically scanned the murky waters, desperate to identify the source of the massive collision that had sent him hurtling out of the cage. Dread filled his heart as he suddenly realized that the colossal great white shark they had seen earlier was the culprit. Before he could even think of a way to defend himself, the beast launched itself like a torpedo, its razor-sharp teeth glistening in the water. In one swift and bone-chilling moment, the shark sunk its jaws into Randall's upper torso, tearing it away from his body with a violent snap. The sensation of excruciating pain mixed with utter terror as Randall felt his life slipping away in the jaws of the monstrous predator. The world around Randall seemed to vanish in an instant as he found himself trapped inside the jaws of the great white shark. The darkness was absolute, and the only sound he could hear was the deafening crunch of the shark's razor-sharp teeth slicing through his flesh and bones. The pain was indescribable, as if every inch of his body was being ripped apart by a thousand knives. His ribs were crushed under the pressure of the shark's jaws, and he knew in that moment that he was doomed. As the shark clenched its massive jaws on Randall's body, his lifeless form hung limply in the water, at the mercy of the animal's frenzied movements. With each violent thrash, the water churned with an ominous blend of swirling crimson and murky green. The shark's razor-sharp teeth shredded Randall's flesh, creating a gory, macabre display in the water. The predator's movements were so powerful that it dragged Randall's mangled remains down into the dark, abyssal depths of the ocean, far from the safety of the surface. It was a gruesome and unsettling sight, a grim reminder of the dangers that lurked beneath the waves. The attack was so sudden that the diving crew was not able to react accordingly. Randall's body was never found and the story of the attack sent fear and terror to the diving community. It was a reminder that nature was unforgiving, and even the bravest and most experienced of thrill-seekers were not immune to its dangers. The Thompson family had been looking forward to their vacation for months. It had been a long and stressful year, and they were all in need of a break. The family consisted of Mr. and Mrs. Thompson, their two children, 11-year-old Jackson and 9-year-old Emily, and their dog, a golden retriever named Charlie. The idea for the vacation had come up during a family meeting. The Thompsons had always loved traveling and exploring new places, 
and they had decided that they wanted to take a road trip. They spent weeks planning their trip, researching the best routes and destinations, and booking hotels and activities. The day of the trip arrived, and the family woke up early to load up their car. They had packed everything they needed, from snacks and water to clothes and toiletries. Jackson had even brought his guitar, hoping to practice during the long car rides. As they drove out of the neighborhood, Mrs. Thompson put on some music and the family sang along. They drove through several states, visiting the Grand Canyon, Mount Rushmore, and Yellowstone National Park, taking hundreds of photos to document their adventures. The Thompson family had been on a road trip for a week, exploring different parts of the country and having the time of their lives. They woke up one morning to the sound of seagulls and the smell of salt water in the air. They remembered that they were near a beach and decided to spend the day there. The family packed up their towels, sunscreen, and snacks and drove to the beach. As they walked towards the shoreline, Jackson and Emily ran ahead, eager to feel the sand between their toes. Mrs. Thompson set up the beach umbrella and chairs, while Mr. Thompson inflated the beach ball. Charlie ran towards the water, barking happily as he splashed around. The family joined him, wading into the waves and feeling the cool water wash over their feet. The children were laughing and playing, building sandcastles and collecting seashells. As the day went on, the family took turns swimming in the ocean, playing beach volleyball, and reading books under the umbrella. They ate sandwiches and fruit, enjoying the warm sun on their skin and the gentle sound of the waves. In the afternoon, the family rented a paddleboard and took turns riding the waves. Jackson and Emily were naturals, standing up on the board and paddling away with ease. Mrs. Thompson struggled a bit, but eventually got the hang of it with some help from Mr. Thompson. Charlie, the family's golden retriever, was excited to join them and barked happily as they set off into the water. As they paddled further away from the shore, Charlie started to bark. At first, the family didn't think much of it, assuming that Charlie was just excited about being on the paddleboard. As they paddled further out, Charlie began to act strangely. He whimpered and paced on the board, his eyes fixed on the water below. The family tried to calm him down, thinking he was just nervous about being out in the ocean. Suddenly, Charlie let out a loud bark and jumped off the board, diving into the water. The family was startled, but assumed he was just chasing after a fish or a bird. However, they soon realized that something was very wrong. As Charlie swam back towards them, they saw a large shadow moving beneath the water. They realized with horror that it was a shark, and it was headed straight towards them. The family froze, unsure of what to do. Suddenly, the paddleboard shook, and Mr. Thompson felt a jolt beneath him. He looked down into the water and saw a large fin disappearing beneath the surface. Mrs. Thompson and Emily started to panic while Jackson tried to keep a level head. Charlie continued to bark, sensing the danger that was lurking below. Mr. Thompson started paddling towards the shore, with Charlie swimming alongside him. But the shark was too fast, and it quickly caught up with them. The family was terrified, but Charlie was brave. He swam between the shark and the family, barking and growling loudly. The shark hesitated for a moment, confused by the dog's aggression. Charlie didn't back down, however. He continued to bark and growl, determined to protect his family. The shark circled around the family, trying to find a way to attack. But Charlie kept swimming back and forth, keeping himself between the shark and the family. The family was able to reach the shore thanks to Charlie's bravery. As they collapsed on the sand, the family looked out at the water, where Charlie was still barking and growling at the shark. The shark finally gave up and swam away, defeated by the dog's fierce protection. The family watched in awe as Charlie returned to them, wagging his tail and seemingly unaware of the danger he had just faced. The family was amazed by Charlie's bravery and loyalty. They knew that he had saved their lives. They hugged him tightly, grateful to have such a wonderful and protective pet. From that day on, the Thompson family made sure to keep a close eye on Charlie whenever they were at the beach. They knew that he would always be there to protect them no matter what. They also made sure to spread the word about Charlie's heroism so that other families could learn from his example and be more vigilant when it came to shark safety. Melissa's colleagues at the marketing firm had often wondered if she was a machine. Her unparalleled work ethic, unrelenting passion, and unwavering commitment 
had earned her the reputation of being the hardest worker in the company. Her persistence and determination had finally paid off when she received a promotion, but it was not enough to keep her from feeling burnt out. As the hustle and bustle of the city began to take its toll on her, Melissa craved an escape to a place where she could find solace and rejuvenation. She decided to take her whole family to the island of Maui in Hawaii, a place known for its idyllic beaches and tranquil waters. The idea of exploring the stunning coastline and indulging in water activities was enough to invigorate her soul. Melissa's family was a diverse and dynamic group, with each member having their own unique traits and personalities. Her parents, who had retired after years of hard work, were a happy couple, enjoying the peace and serenity that life after work provided. Melissa's younger brother, on the other hand, was a self-proclaimed daredevil, always seeking new adventures and taking risks that most would avoid. Her younger sister was the baby of the family, looking up to Melissa as an inspiration and role model. She was eager to follow in her big sister's footsteps, always watching her every move and admiring her accomplishments with an air of awe and wonder. Despite their differences, the family loved and supported each other, ready to face any challenge that came their way. The island of Maui was a tropical haven that welcomed Melissa's family with open arms. The turquoise waters glimmered in the sunlight, and the white sandy beaches stretched for miles, inviting them to explore. The constant murmur of the waves crashing against the shore provided a soothing soundtrack to their adventures, while the soft sand tickled their toes. But beneath the idyllic scenery lay a world of danger, and it was only a matter of time before they would find themselves entangled in its grasp. As the sun began to set, Melissa and her family sat down at a beachside bar to enjoy a drink and soak up the island's ambiance. A friendly local overheard their conversation and offered a suggestion that would change their vacation forever. The local recommended that they explore the Molokini Crater, a dormant undersea volcanic crater. Intrigued, Melissa and her family eagerly inquired for more details about the location. The local described it as a magnificent wonder of nature, with an abundance of marine life and underwater caves waiting to be explored. As the group imagined themselves diving into the clear blue water of the crater, they felt a sense of excitement and apprehension. They had never attempted anything like this before, and the unknown dangers lurking beneath the surface added to the thrill. The idea of venturing into a crater formed by a volcano that had been active in the past made their hearts race. Despite their hesitation, they decided to take the plunge and embark on this new adventure. On the day of the dive, the family was bubbling with excitement as they strapped on their diving gear and jumped into the cool, clear water surrounding Molokini Crater. The vibrant colors of the coral reef below were mesmerizing, and the family couldn't help but feel a sense of wonder and awe at the otherworldly beauty before them. Schools of brightly colored fish swam around them, while majestic sea turtles glided gracefully by. The eerie silence of the underwater world only added to the sense of mystery and adventure that Melissa and her family felt. But as they delved deeper into the crater, a feeling of unease began to settle in the pit of their stomachs. However, while swimming, Melissa noticed a group of large shadows lurking in the murky waters. Curious, she used her underwater flashlight to shine a light on the shadows. Melissa was petrified to see a pack of tiger sharks stalking the murky waters. In a panic, Melissa swam to the surface and alerted her whole family. The family were in a frenzy, thrashing relentlessly with their efforts to reach the safety of the waiting boat. The chaos caught the attention of the sharks. The pack of sharks swam towards the commotion. Realizing that there's prey in the water, the predators went on a feeding frenzy. The rest of the family were almost upon the boat, but Melissa was not so lucky. In a matter of seconds, she was surrounded and circled around by a pack of hungry tiger sharks. Melissa could see the fins of five sharks circling around her. She tried to swim away as fast as she could, but the sharks were faster. Suddenly, one of the predators lunged at her, biting Melissa's left leg. Melissa screamed in agony as she felt the shark's razor-sharp teeth 
tear her flesh. The water around them was crimson red with Melissa's blood mixing with the salt water. The smell of the blood in the water crazed the other sharks, who were overcome with their primal instincts and hunger. The other sharks started attacking Melissa, who was helpless against the might of the predatory beast of the sea. As the first shark latched on a Melissa's leg, tossing her around like a rag doll in the water, one shark latched onto Melissa's arm. Suddenly, in a bone-crunching bite, both sharks bit off Melissa's limbs. Melissa couldn't even scream, as another shark bit off her head. The sharks continued their harrowing attack. Some sharks began ripping the other limbs, while one bit on Melissa's torso, dragging her mangled, lifeless body to the depths of the ocean. Melissa's family could only watch in horror as this pack of tiger sharks ripped her apart. The Coast Guard responded to the distress call of the guide, but it was no use. After several days of search, no part of Melissa was found. Her family was left with the emotional scar of watching their beloved Melissa devoured by the primal predators of the sea. The sun shone down on the pristine waters of Monterey Bay, casting a warm glow on the tranquil scene below. The gentle waves lapped against the shore, creating a soothing soundtrack to the picturesque landscape. The clear blue sky stretched out above, inviting anyone to venture out into the endless expanse of the ocean. It was a day that begged to be enjoyed, a day that whispered promises of adventure and relaxation. For Andrew, this is a perfect day to go for a swim. Andrew was a skilled swimmer and diver whose love for the ocean was insatiable. He could spend hours floating in the salty waters, basking in the warmth of the sun and reveling in the coolness of the ocean's embrace. His movements in the water were effortless as he glided through the calm and clear waters of Monterey Bay, feeling the weightlessness of his body and the freedom of his spirit. Today was no different as he set out for a leisurely swim, taking in the beauty and serenity of the world beneath the waves. Andrew was entranced by the serene beauty of the ocean as he swam further out, lulled by the gentle rhythm of the waves. The shimmering blue water enveloped him, creating a sense of tranquility and calm. The deeper he ventured, the more the world above the surface receded into a distant memory. But just as quickly as he had been entranced, Andrew was snapped out of his reverie by a sharp, piercing pain that coursed through his body. It felt like a red-hot poker had been thrust through his thighs and was now making its way up towards his abdomen. His breaths became ragged gasps as he tried to make sense of what was happening. Andrew's mind raced as he tried to comprehend the situation he was in. He had heard stories about sharks attacking swimmers, but he never thought he would be the one to experience it. The pain was excruciating, and he knew he was in serious trouble. Looking down, he saw the unmistakable silhouette of a great white shark. Its jaws clamped tightly on his body, and he felt its teeth sinking deeper into his flesh. The shark's strength was immense, and it was trying to drag him down into the murky depths of the ocean. Andrew's survival instincts kicked in as he began to thrash and fight against the shark's grip. His muscles burned with exertion as he struggled to free himself from the predator's grasp. But the shark was relentless, determined to drag him to the bottom of the sea. Andrew's body went into shock as he felt the immense pain of the predator's bite, but his survival instincts kept him conscious. The vicious shark had mistaken him for its prey, and its razor-sharp teeth shredded through Andrew's flesh. The once calm waters were now stained with the deep red of his blood, sending a sickening feeling through his body. The massive shark refused to let go of Andrew's body, thrashing and churning through the water with a ferocity that could only be fueled by primal hunger. Andrew's screams were drowned out by the sound of the waves crashing against the shore as he fought for his life. The relentless predator's thrashing only made the wounds on Andrew's body worse. He felt as though his body was being ripped apart piece by piece. Adrenaline continued to surge through his veins, keeping him from passing out. 
but he knew that he couldn't hold on forever. Andrew was on the brink of losing consciousness when he felt a sudden release of pressure from his body. He gasped for air, feeling the stinging sensation of salt water seeping into his wounds. The water around him was a gruesome shade of red, a stark contrast to the serene blue it once was. The shark had released him, but Andrew knew that he was not out of danger yet. As Andrew gasped for air, trying to keep his head above water, he saw the unmistakable shape of the great white shark closing in on him once again. The predator's dorsal fin slicing through the water like a knife, creating a chilling wake behind it. Andrew's heart pounded in his chest as he realized the shark was making another attempt to attack him. Andrew's survival instincts kicked in as he lashed out at the monstrous predator with all his might. Every push and kick was fueled by his fear and determination to stay alive. The shark recoiled, surprised by the sudden attack, and retreated to the dark abyss below. Andrew's mind raced as he struggled to stay afloat his senses on high alert for any sign of the relentless predator. Despite his fear and pain, Andrew refused to give up. He mustered all the strength he had left to try and make his way back to the shore, but his mangled thighs and abdomen screamed in agony with each movement. He knew that time was running out, and the thought of the shark lurking just below the surface sent shivers down his spine. Fortune was on Andrew's side as a band of paddleboarders caught sight of his distress and sprang to his rescue. Without hesitation, they hoisted him onto their paddleboard, determined to bring him safely back to shore. Andrew clung to the board with all his might, wincing in pain as the salty spray of the ocean stung his wounds. Finally, they reached the shore, where a group of bystanders rushed to help them pull Andrew from the board and onto the sand. Andrew was quickly whisked away to the hospital, where doctors worked tirelessly to save his life. Despite the trauma he had endured, Andrew survived the shark attack and emerged from the hospital a changed man, forever humbled by the immense power and danger of the ocean. His story served as a cautionary tale for anyone who dared to underestimate the forces of nature. Francis has seen it all. The stunning views of the San Francisco Bay Area, the captivating skyline of San Francisco, and the eerie sight of Alcatraz Island looming in the middle of the water. He had been a boat operator for the Alcatraz Island tours for a decade now, and yet he never got tired of the sight of the bay and the island. The day had started like any other. Francis had picked up a group of tourists from San Francisco Bay and brought them to Alcatraz Island for the prison tour. After the tour was over, Francis was waiting for the tourists to return so he could take them back to the bay. But something caught his eye. The calm waters around the island seemed to call out to him. And without any particular reason, he decided to take the boat for a trip around the island. The situation turned dire when the vessel's engine suddenly faltered, refusing to restart. Left stranded in the frigid waters near the island, Francis attempted to call for assistance but was informed that it could be a considerable amount of time before a tugboat would arrive to aid him. With no means of propulsion and an uncertain weight ahead, he found himself in a precarious predicament. As Francis sat there waiting for the tugboat to rescue him at his stranded vessel, he couldn't help but feel restless. Something was nagging at him, like a persistent itch that he couldn't scratch. Suddenly, he remembered the acrid scent of smoke that had filled his nostrils earlier, emanating from the engine room. His curiosity piqued, he made his way to the aft of the boat, gingerly leaning over the edge of the deck to peer into the mechanical abyss below. It was then, in that vulnerable position, that fate decided to strike its cruel hand. Before Francis could react, a monstrous figure emerged from the depths of the frigid waters surrounding the boat. It was a behemoth of the sea, a great white shark, with jaws wide open and rows of serrated teeth glistening in the sunlight. With ferocious speed, it lunged at Francis, sinking its teeth into his shoulder with a bone-crushing force. A blood-curdling scream escaped Francis's lips as searing pain shot through his body. 
He felt as if his flesh was being torn apart, the shark's teeth slicing through his skin like a hot knife through butter. Blood poured out from the wound, mingling with the salty waters of the San Francisco Bay, staining the once calm surface a deep crimson. Francis thrashed and writhed, desperately trying to free himself from the jaws of the predator. But the shark's grip was relentless, its teeth sinking deeper into his shoulder with each thrash and pull. The excruciating pain was overwhelming, and Francis could feel his strength ebbing away, replaced by a numbing sensation as blood loss took its toll. As the water closed in around him, Francis realized he was in a fight for his life. He tried to fend off the shark with his free hand, desperately striking its sleek body, but it seemed impervious to his feeble attempts. The shark's thrashing movements only served to drag Francis further away from the safety of the boat deeper into the icy waters of the bay. Francis felt a sense of hopelessness creeping over him. His body grew weak and his vision blurred. He knew he was running out of time. But then, a surge of determination coursed through him, fueled by a primal instinct to survive. Summoning every ounce of strength he had, Francis reached out with his free hand and groped for the shark's eye. With a primal roar of pain and determination, Francis mustered every bit of strength he had to hold on to the shark's eye, feeling its squirming body thrash and writhe in agony beneath him. His grip was unrelenting, his fingers digging into the soft flesh of the predator's eye as he clung to life with every fiber of his being. The shark, shocked by the sudden attack, momentarily let go of Francis' shoulder, giving him the chance he needed to pull himself away from his razor-sharp teeth. Francis felt a searing pain rip through his flesh as he tore himself free. His shoulder and arm mangled beyond recognition. But he refused to give up even as the water around him turned crimson with his own blood. He knew that his only chance of survival was to fight back with everything he had. With a primal scream of defiance, Francis kicked the shark's nose with all his might, feeling the force of the impact reverberate through his entire body. The shark, stunned and in pain, swam away in a sudden burst of speed, disappearing into the murky depths. Francis was left floating in the water, bleeding and battered, but alive. He knew he couldn't make it back to the boat on his own, but he refused to give up. With a flicker of hope, he looked towards the horizon, desperately scanning for any signs of rescue. And then, like a beacon of hope, a tugboat appeared on the horizon, rushing towards him. It was the backup he had called for earlier. Francis felt a surge of relief and gratitude as he was pulled out of the water and onto the safety of the tugboat. He was whisked away to the hospital, where he received urgent medical attention for his severe injuries. Despite the devastating loss of his left shoulder, arm, and hand, Francis emerged from his encounter with a great white shark as a living testament to resilience and survival. His body bore the scars of the harrowing ordeal, a reminder of the ferocity of nature's predators. Since he was a child, Ryan was captivated by the mystery and wonder of the ocean. As he grew older, his fascination only deepened, especially when it came to the creatures that call the underwater world their home. He was mesmerized by their power, grace, and raw beauty, and he wanted to share their magnificence with the world. Ryan became a skilled underwater photographer, always on the lookout for that perfect shot that would capture the essence of the ocean's predators. He spent countless hours studying their behavior and movements, observing their hunting strategies, and waiting patiently for the right moment to snap a photo. He dove deep into the ocean, braving the dark and the cold, determined to capture the elusive creatures on film. That's why Ryan's heart raced with excitement when he heard about the upcoming international competition for underwater photography. He knew that this was the perfect opportunity to showcase his skills and passion for capturing the stunning beauty of the underwater world. To prepare for the competition, Ryan searched far and wide for the ideal location that would give him the edge he needed to win. His search led him to the mesmerizing waters of Tiger Beach in the Bahamas, a place that offered both breathtaking scenery 
and the chance to capture stunning shots of one of the ocean's most awe-inspiring predators, the tiger shark. As Ryan arrived in Tiger Beach, he was struck by the stunning beauty of the place. He spent several days getting familiar with the area, marveling at the incredible underwater world that surrounded him. The turquoise waters were crystal clear, revealing a world of wonder and mystery beneath the surface. As he dived deeper into the water, Ryan was greeted by schools of brightly colored fish that darted playfully around him. The vibrant colors of the fish stood out against the backdrop of the coral reefs, their movements hypnotic and mesmerizing. The sun's rays filtered through the water, casting a golden glow on everything in its path. The light danced on the sea floor, creating a magical, almost otherworldly ambiance that took Ryan's breath away. He felt as if he had entered another dimension, one where the laws of physics and reality were slightly altered. As Ryan lost himself in the underwater world, his senses were completely engulfed by the awe-inspiring scenes that unfolded before him. The coral reefs, in all their resplendent glory, had become the focal point of his attention, and the schools of fish that swam past him appeared to dance with an ethereal tune. However, he had become oblivious to the predator that was inching closer to him from behind. A shadowy presence, lurking just beyond his periphery, stalked him with a silent grace, biding its time until it could strike. Ryan was utterly unaware of the imminent danger that was about to befall him. As if struck by a bolt of lightning, Ryan felt an excruciating pain jolt through his body. A sharp, searing sensation ripped through his left leg, and a muffled scream of agony escaped his lips. His heart raced with terrible realization as he recognized the source of his torment. A 13-foot tiger shark had clamped down on him with a ferocity that made his bones quake. Its powerful jaws lined with razor-sharp teeth ripped through his flesh with a frightening force. Ryan's mind raced as he struggled to comprehend the gravity of the situation. His worst nightmare had become a reality, and he was at the mercy of a fearsome predator, with no escape in sight. As the shark clamped its jaws down on Ryan's leg, its powerful muscles thrashed about, throwing him around like a toy in a fit of fury. The water turned a deep shade of crimson as Ryan's blood seeped out, mixing with the salt water. The sharp, serrated teeth of the tiger shark tore through his skin and muscle, causing unimaginable agony that shot through every nerve ending in his body. The pain was all-consuming, knocking out any other thoughts or sensations, and Ryan was left to endure the brutal assault of the predator in a world of pain and terror. Ryan tried to kick the shark repeatedly, but his efforts were futile against the shark's incredible strength. In one sickening crunch, the shark bit off Ryan's leg completely, severing it from his body with ruthless efficiency. As Ryan's muffled screams fell on the deaf ears of the ocean, the shark prepared to strike again, stalking its prey as it circled around him. Ryan's strength was waning, and his mangled leg was drowning him in pain. The shark lunged once more, its jaws gaping wide, ready to finish the job it had started. But this time, Ryan was prepared. Instinctively, he reached for the knife on his waist and plunged it into the shark's eye with all his might. The shark recoiled in pain, thrashing wildly in the water before retreating into the depths of the ocean. But Ryan's victory was short-lived. He was almost out of breath, his vision growing dim as he fought to stay conscious. As Ryan lost all hope, he saw a local diver approach him, a glimmer of hope in an otherwise hopeless situation. The diver managed to pull Ryan towards his boat, performing first aid as he called for rescue. Despite the diver's valiant efforts, Ryan's condition was critical. He drifted in and out of consciousness during the journey towards the hospital, his fate hanging in the balance. It wasn't until two long, painful days later that Ryan finally woke up, his leg amputated to save his life. Though he had lost a limb, he had managed to survive the harrowing ordeal with the tiger shark, a testament to the human spirit's indomitable will to survive. 
Magdalene had always been a hard worker. She grew up in a small town in the Midwest, where her parents instilled in her the value of a strong work ethic. When she graduated from high school, she immediately started working at a local factory, putting in long hours and saving every penny she could. As she got older, Magdalene began to dream of something more. She wanted to travel the world, experience new cultures, and live life on her own terms. But she knew that in order to do that, she would need to save up a substantial amount of money. So she set her sights on a career in finance. She went back to school at night while working full-time during the day and eventually earned a degree in accounting. With her new skills and knowledge, Magdalene landed a job at a large financial firm in the city. For the next 25 years, Magdalene dedicated herself to her job. She worked tirelessly, climbing the corporate ladder and earning promotions along the way. She saved as much money as she could, always keeping her eye on the prize of an early retirement. Despite her success in her career, Magdalene never lost sight of her dreams. She spent every spare moment planning and researching her future travels, making sure that she'd be able to experience everything she had ever wanted to see and do. Finally, at the age of 43, Magdalene decided it was time to retire. She had saved enough money to support herself for the rest of her life, and she was ready to start living her dream. Magdalene sold her house, bought a small RV, and set out on the road. Over the next few years, she traveled all over the United States, visiting national parks, historical landmarks, and small towns. She met new people, tried new foods, and saw things she had never imagined. As she traveled, Magdalene realized that she had made the right decision in retiring early. She was finally able to live the life she had always dreamed of, and she was grateful for every moment. One day, as Magdalene was driving along the coast, she came across a small beach town that caught her eye. It was a picturesque place with quaint little shops and cafes lining the streets and a long sandy beach stretching out in front of her. Magdalene knew she had to stop and explore. She parked the RV in a nearby campground and spent the next few days wandering around the town. She met some friendly locals who showed her their favorite spots, including a hidden cove that was only accessible at low tide. Magdalene spent hours sitting on the beach, watching the waves crash against the shore and feeling the sun on her face. As she walked through the town, Magdalene couldn't help but notice how relaxed everyone seemed. People strolled along the streets, stopping to chat with each other, or sit at outdoor tables and enjoy a coffee or a snack. There was a sense of peace and contentment in the air that was infectious. Magdalene found herself drawn to the idea of settling down in this little town. She had been on the road for years now, and while she loved the freedom and adventure of traveling, she was starting to feel a little bit lonely. She missed having a community of people around her, and she longed for a place to call home. After some thought, Magdalene decided to take the plunge. She found a small cottage for sale on a quiet street just a few blocks from the beach, and she decided to buy it. She spent the next few months fixing it up, adding her own personal touches and making it feel like home. Magdalene spent her days exploring the town and getting to know her neighbors. She went on long walks on the beach and learned how to drive a boat. One evening, Magdalene decided to take her small boat out to sea and spend the night sleeping on the waves. It was a clear night, with a full moon casting a soft glow over the water. She lay down in the boat and listened to the sound of the waves lapping against the side. As she drifted off to sleep to the sound of the gentle lapping of the waves against the hull of the boat, Magdalene was startled awake by a sudden jolt. The boat was rocking violently, and she could hear something thrashing in the water nearby. She sat up and peered over the side of the boat, trying to make out what was happening. That's when she saw it. A massive great white shark, easily 15 feet long, was attacking her boat. It had bitten into the side of the boat and was shaking it back and forth, trying to get Magdalene inside. Magdalene tried to stay calm, but her mind was racing. She had heard stories of sharks attacking boats before, and she didn't know what to do. She grabbed a nearby oar and began hitting the shark with all her might, hoping to scare it away. But the shark seemed undeterred, continuing to bite and shake the boat. Magdalene frantically searched for something else to use as a weapon. She remembered that she had a can of bear spray on board, but she wasn't sure if it would be enough to scare off a 15-foot predator. She quickly grabbed it and aimed it at the shark's face and sprayed, hoping to repel it with a strong scent. To her relief, the spray seemed to do the trick. The shark suddenly released the boat and swam away. 
disappearing into the darkness. Magdalene sat there for a few minutes, catching her breath and waiting to make sure the shark wasn't coming back. Magdalene breathed a sigh of relief as the shark swam away, but her relief was short-lived. Magdalene thought she was safe, but she was wrong. The shark had disappeared into the darkness, but it had not given up. It circled the boat and came back for a second attack. The shark reappeared, its massive jaws closing in on her arm. Magdalene screamed in terror as the shark clamped down on her arm, dragging her into the water. Pain shot through her body as the shark shook her violently, trying to tear her arm off. Magdalene's mind raced with fear and panic as she desperately fought back, hitting the shark with everything she could find. But the shark was too strong, and Magdalene's efforts seemed to only anger it more. Just when she thought all hope was lost, Magdalene spotted a nearby boat. With all her strength, she managed to break free from the shark's grip and swim towards the boat, yelling for help. The occupants of the boat quickly sprang into action, pulling Magdalene out of the water and taking her to shore. Her arm was badly injured and she was rushed to the hospital for emergency treatment. Magdalene spent the next few weeks in the hospital, recovering from her injuries. The attack had left her with deep wounds and extensive nerve damage in her arm, making it difficult to move or even hold things. She was devastated to learn that she might not ever fully regain the use of her arm. Despite the setback, Magdalene refused to give up on her dream of living in the beach town. She worked tirelessly to rehabilitate her arm, undergoing multiple surgeries and months of physical therapy. Slowly but surely, she began to regain some movement in her arm, but it would never be the same. Magdalene's experience with a shark attack had left her with a newfound appreciation for life. She realized that every moment was precious and should be treasured. She decided to use her experience to inspire others, sharing her story and encouraging people to never give up on their dreams, no matter what obstacles they might face. In the end, Magdalene found that her dream of settling down in a small beach town had come true. Despite the hardships and challenges she had faced, she had found a community of people who welcomed her with open arms and helped her through her recovery. She continued to explore the town and surrounding areas, but now with a newfound appreciation for life and a deeper sense of gratitude for every moment.